Oh, hi. It's Friday, and that means it's an F and A. Yeah. And today's part two of how an environment can make your animation better. So today I want to show you a couple examples of a few different movies where certain different types of influences on the character can kind of make the character fit within the environment better. And because of that, I think that your animation can benefit from it. Your character can react to certain elements driven by the environment, driven by something that goes by a character or certain temperature changes. And there are many more examples. I want to show you those via a few different movies. So let's start right away with Star Trek. What I like in this example is that the actors were instructed to kind of look up and react or kind of pretend to react to a shuttle flying by. And what's cool to me is that certain moments when the character looks up, the shuttle actually flies by. And because of the engine or whatever, you know, the turbulence that a shuttle might create, you can see how the hair reacts. So to me, it's not just a character in a scene or it could be a blue screen, a green screen, and all that CG stuff happens in the back and the characters are not really affected by it. They don't react to it, they don't look at anything. And I think the moment where if something happens next to your character, let's say your character just stands around and it's something big, a plane or a car or whatever it is, and the character talks to someone and then acknowledges just through a look or kind of a wince or whatever it is that affects the character, I think that helps the character kind of blend together with the environment. It's not just two separate pieces. They kind of feed off of each other. Another example I want to show here is from Skull. Island. In this case, I think something that's actually not quite working is her reaction. So as she turns around, everybody's firing behind her. And that stuff is loud. You get a lot of gunfire behind her. And what doesn't she do? She doesn't wins. She doesn't blink. There's no reaction. So to me, it just feels kind of fake. It just feels like something that was added by the muzzle flash and the noise and all that stuff. You don't want to have all those guns actually shooting behind an actor, which is a bummer. I mean, it's not a bummer. It's like, it would be dangerous. But I think if you have this in a scene where a character looks, and in her case, it would be something where it would be surprising. She's already awed by whatever she sees, then so suddenly have really loud gunfire at least a blink, if not a little bit of a wind. So if your character sees something and then something else happens behind them, next to them, something unexpected, try to have that character react to that and be it through a look or kind of a wind or whatever it is that could be because of heat or because of noise, or it could be because of something like wind. So let's take an example from a Batman versus Superman. So you have Bruce Wayne going up there and you see all those bats flying around, flying around. What is missing from the kid? If you look at the hair. The hair is not moving. You have all those things flying around, flapping his little wings, but there's so many bats. It would have some sort of effect on the kid's face. The kid could be, I mean, not, I mean, it's already odd by floating up there, kind of, kind of a dream sequence, but it could be something where it doesn't have to be like a wincing thing, but at least the hair should be reacting. I know I'm being super picky and I would hope that you would not not get hired because your character's hair is not moving because of a car driving by or a big dragon landing and flapping its wings. But I think it could be cool where if your character says something and says, oh, here's my dragon and the dragon lands and flaps its wings and kind of shuffles the hair around that the character could then readjust it or kind of flap it around or, I mean, cool, whatever it is, there could be a scarf that then goes into the character's face and you can take it down. You could have that in a comedic fashion, but I think it would be cool that the character would react to that. So it doesn't feel like two separate pieces in your scene. A good example to me would be Lord of the Rings. I love this shot when the arrows fly by and Agent Smith <laughs> reacts with his winds, the hair moves. It's just so cool. And I remember seeing this in theaters where it was so cool that he was there. He was part of that environment stuff was flying by and he was just part of that action. And it didn't feel like just the character on some stage with the green screen and then stuff added in the back via CG and all that. I thought it was really cool. I think it really, really added to that intensity of that moment. Another good example would be Tomb Raider. I thought that was kind of neat that when the torch the light comes on next to her that she would react. She's already absorbed by whatever she sees in front of her. So having something go off next to her, she would kind of react and then continue with her business. Again, anything that starts in being, you know, a fire that starts or a light or a sound, like anything that your character could react to, I think could be neat. And then you can escalate that. Could just be a character reacting to it, but could be in a comedic fashion where the reaction would be bigger. The character could say something, could pantomime something. It doesn't have to be something small. It's up to you to make it bigger. Maybe that will be a focal point of your shot. Speaking of fire, there's a great scene in Iron Man 2 when the fire goes off and you see this big flame and 
then you have the bad guy reacting to the heat. I mean, I would assume it's the stunt guy, but he takes a step back because if you've ever grilled anything, I don't know if you have, or you have you know, played as a kid in front of a fire, don't fire it, that's hot. So imagine that massive fire there, this is gonna burn your face off. So you gotta take a step back because that heat is pretty brutal. So if it was just a green screen or a CG effect, and the character just kind of stands there, that's kind of lame. And speaking of that movie, there's actually a cool scene where an explosion goes off and the hair goes up because of the shockwave. Super nerdy, it's just super tiny. I love that stuff. And speaking of wind, there was a recent trailer for the new Godzilla movie where the actress turns around and then the flag goes down and the flag goes back up. And it would have been cool to have some sort of effect on her hair so that it doesn't feel like this is a CG flag that just happens to go up when it needs to, but then she is not really reacting to it, or at least the hair is not. Again, does it break the shot? No, but it's just kind of a nerdy detail thing that I love in movies and if you have control over the shot, be it at home or you have creative control in your scene at work, I mean, this could be really cool to add to the scene and kind of, again, mix those two together so it feels like she is part of the environment, the environment affects her and so on and so on. So lots of little examples, some good stuff, some bad stuff and bad stuff, it's all subjective. And those are definitely things that I nerd out, but I think it's really cool when it works and sometimes it just stands out to me when it doesn't work and that's very subjective for other people, it might work and it's totally fine. But you know, when I do a shot, I think, what could I do? What could I do with my character in that scene? It's pretend it's a CG character and it's at work, you have a live action plate. Is there anything in the plate that I can use so that the character, that CG, reacts to that? So it feels, once you have all the final rendering and the compositing, and it already looks real, so that they kind of work together. So if something happens in terms of heat or wind or an explosion or a shake, or whatever it is that have your character react to it. And I'm repeating myself, so it doesn't feel so separate. But I think if you just go that one extra step, it just kind of helps, even if it's on a subconscious level and the audience doesn't go, wait, that's missing. I think they will somehow feel it and it's gonna make the movie better. And by better, I mean like 0.001%. But then again, I just saw Mission Impossible Fallout and just knowing that Tom Cruise is there doing all the stunts, it just adds an extra level of holy moly, this is awesome, he's right there. And that's just something I like. If you don't like that, you can comment, you can say, I don't like this. And if you haven't subscribed yet, why not subscribe and hit that bell button so that you get all the notifications to all my uploads. And as always, if you've watched the whole thing till the very end, I say thank you. I think I'm gonna watch Mission Impossible Fallout again next week. That movie has me pumped. I'm still pumped from seeing it yesterday. It was so good. Watch it if you can. And if you've seen it, let me know what you like. But going back onto the topic, if you have any of the scenes where something happens to a character, be it a car that crashes, a fire that goes off, an explosion, sound, or something else that kind of triggers a reaction in the character and makes the shot that much more believable, let me know. I would love to get more examples and that's it for now. Thanks for watching.